Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you very much for FCC commissioners for being with us today. Uh, Chairman Pai, technologies such as the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain, are disrupting the markets and even changing our everyday lives. We need widespread broadband and connectivity to drive these technologies to their potential. It's the, is the Commission focusing resources on learning more about these emerging technologies and how critical broadband access is to this discussion? Uh, we are, Congressman, and thank you for uh, that thoughtful question. Uh, I've personally spent, both in my uh, because of professional obligations and personal interest, a lot of time thinking about these issues starting in the fall of 2017. And that's part of the reason why uh, recently I announced that the FCC would be hosting a forum later this year on the impact of artificial intelligence and machine learning, in particular on the communications sector, because I think we're simply scratching the surface in terms of the potential of some of these technologies. They've obviously disrupted a number of industries, and I think there's a useful focus for the FCC in thinking about how it could disrupt communications. Uh, similarly, I've been looking at another a number of other technologies, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, a uh, blockchain, uh, connected vehicles and the like. I think uh, we need to make sure that we're always uh, keeping track of some of these technologies. It's hard because of both the depth and the breadth of some of these innovations. But nonetheless, I have been talking to a number of experts, including our own uh, chief technology officer, uh, companies in Silicon Valley and the like, about how to make sure that we are uh, aware of some of these changes. And uh, the transformation thus far has been tremendous, but I think over the next five to 10 years, it's going to be even more mind-blowing. Well, thank you. Uh, Commissioner O'Reilly, uh, the Ray Bomb Act calls for the FCC and the NTIA to identify 100 megahertz of new unlicensed spectrum under 8 gigahertz by the end of 2022. What steps will the Commission take to free up much needed unlicensed spectrum to support growing consumer demand for existing technologies and to provide innovation space for the technologies of the future? Absolutely. Thank you, Congressman. I don't the answer to your previous question, Chairman Pai. I would say also don't forget about narrowband. Narrowband IoT, very important. But uh, I don't want to get sidetracked. To your point on, on licensed, uh, the, the commission with the chairman's uh, great, great leadership is going to move forward on a number of things, including uh, in six gigahertz, where we're going to hopefully, uh, assuming that an NDOI or NPRM is adopted later this fall and move to order sometime next year, uh, provide a, additional spectrum for unlicensed purposes. We've also been working, Commissioner Rosenworcel and I have been working extensively on 5.9, and I've also raised the question of whether 4.9 may be a place that we can work with to have unlicensed bands uh, and services, because we are have reached to maximum capacity. Five gigahertz is getting rather full uh, in terms of services. 2.4 is already full. So unlicensed is going to have to be a very big portion of our consideration going forward. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Carr, uh, earlier this week, the House passed the Precision Connectivity Act, and uh, we've all been hearing a lot of questions coming from us, especially when we're talking about rural broadband and getting that uh, access out there. Uh, this is a bipartisan bill that uh, I authored with my uh, friend, the gentleman from uh, Iowa, Mr. Lobzak, which directs the commission to set up a task force and collabor collaboration with the Secretary of Agriculture to identify and measure gaps and broadband availability and develop policy recommendations to promote rapid broadband expansion on agricultural land. Do you believe the Commission can execute the requirements of the Precision, of the Precision Agriculture Connectivity Act? Thank you, Congressman. Yes, I do, and I think it's an important issue, as you point out, the intensive amount of data and broadband that's used in agricultural today uh, is quite mind-blowing. When you get outside of D.C., I was in Moline, Michigan, and you see the high bandwidth uses from connected combines to drones that are taking detailed images down to the tiny dots of a leaf on a crop. We need to find ways to get high-speed broadband uh, for uh, farmers and ranchers. And I think this bill is one way uh, that's going to do it. Well, let me follow up with that. To what degree will it require a combination of the technologies and the wireline and wireless uh, to meet that uh, broadband challenge for the uh, precision agriculture? Ultimately, it's going to require a mix of technologies. Fiber is going to work at some places, fixed wireless in other places. We're seeing a new generation of satellite technologies that can also help. So we're going to have a lot of different technologies that are making that last mile work. Okay, well, thank you very much. And Madam Chair, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen, 